As you can see, we have a very special guest in the house today. I got AB over here from the West Coast to enjoy some of this cold and rainy Virginia weather. Speaking of cold and rainy weather, today we're gonna make some delicious beef stew for you guys to warm us up. So today we're gonna be cooking out of the cookbook, right? Hey, you know what? Listen, I'm not finna over talk it, bruh. You know what I mean? We done made this recipe, you know, recipe a few times. Hey, let's get it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, let's take a look at these ingredients. So look, we're gonna go ahead and just start right here. Look, this is short rib, right? You can use short rib inside of the recipe. You know, we use chuck roast, any of your stew meats, those work. But today's choice, this is, this is it right here. Look, we got potatoes, we got peas. I'll go ahead and let you take it over from there. Yeah, we got the vegetables, we got carrots, we got onions, we got celery, we got thyme for the fresh herbs. We've got some beef broth, some garlic paste, tomato paste some flour to thicken up our stew, a little salt. Of course, we gotta have that AP seasoning. <laughs> right, and right. this episode is sponsored by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code make it happen at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 12 million balls. I've been using Manscaped for years now and I'll never go back Back to anything else their performance package 4.0 just arrived and man it's a game changer it's got the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer which is super important crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold all your goodies it doesn't get much better than that and i want you guys to give it a try so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code make it happen at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com use the code make it happen unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped okay so look i want you guys to take a look at this i'm gonna go ahead and pull this out right now look and i'm gonna give a pro tip you guys want to take your meat it'll be cool if you put it in the refrigerator i mean in the freezer right you want it to become a little bit more on the rigid side you know what i mean because when it's hot room temperature stuff like that it just becomes a chore to go ahead and cut it now you want to cut your stew meat you want to cut it into bite-sized pieces right it's really how big of a piece did you want to be you know like put in your mouth right i'm gonna cut this one down this way hey youngster nephew i'm liking the knife man nice sharp knife yes sir that makes the job a lot easier yes so here look we just want to cube it up and i want to say this if you take a look at this look at the marbling inside of this short rib give you this look more of that means more flavor right so we'll just take it this right here i probably will trim off just a little bit of this you know what i mean just to get rid of this all right so look we just cut this down about right here because we're gonna get a little bit of the shrinkage also you know uh, this is gonna be that one a little small, but this is nice for me. It's gonna get a little bit smaller That's another piece that's good, you know, so I'm not gonna bore you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this down just like you see All right, so as you guys can see, AB did a beautiful job of cutting these up into bite-sized pieces That's important for beef stew. You want something that can fit on a spoon that way it's nice and bite-sized. We're gonna go ahead and season these with some kosher salt and get ready to sear them. All right, so I'm just gonna hit this with a little kosher salt. We'll get our cast iron skillet fired up. Actually, it's a Dutch oven. <laughs> it's all good. I Thank just you. wanna know this though. Next time I come out here, man, can you have some gloves that fit my hands, man? My bad. Yeah, no problem. Hey, you know what? I'll travel with them, don't trip. I <laughs> know, <laughs> nah, homie, you didn't roll down. I did break out the short rib though. <laughs> no, that, that you did. All right, so as you can see, we have our Dutch oven set over medium high heat. We're gonna go ahead and uh, sear off this uh, short rib. Wanna get a nice crust and color on there. It's gonna provide some texture to your stew as well. Man, that short rib looks good. It does, bro. Nice and marbled. Those white lines of fat that you see in the short rib, that's gonna be your fat content. That's gonna add lots of flavor to your stew. As you can see, AB's laying them in there, trying to give them a little elbow room, that way they get some nice color. And if you gotta do it in batches, that's cool too. If you want, you can get in there with your fingers and press down, that way you make sure they're making maximum surface area contact with that skillet. That way you develop a nice deep, dark crust on there. About two or three minutes per side. So after a couple minutes, you develop a nice, beautiful color like this. You want to flip it over and sear the other side as well. 
and then we'll add our second batch. Hey, so look, one of the things we want to explain to everybody and let them know it is we're not trying to like cook those throughout, right? Right. So listen, we're going to need some time once we put everything and let it, you know, start to simmer. But if you guys take a look in the inside right there, you can see they've already been flipped. Look at that right there. That's nothing but flavor. And it's key that we have that fine on the bottom. I'll show you why in just one second. Okay, so look, earlier we talked about having the fine down on the bottom. That's what we want to have. Look, the onions and the, the acid from the onions is going to help get that up. So right now we'll add our veggies. There we go. Let them start to soften up a little bit. Then we'll add some flour to thicken everything up. All right, so as you can see, we have some celery and onions in the pot right now. We're gonna wait on adding the carrots and the uh, potatoes because we don't want them to get too soft. So about 30 minutes before the stew is done, that's when we'll add the potatoes, make sure they're nice and tender. We don't want it to turn into mush. So we'll just get the party started with a little onion and celery. Saute them down a bit. Hey, they looking good already. Smelling good too. Yes, sir. Lots of flavor at the bottom of that skillet. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead. Let's do it like this. You know how we talk about using the right tool for the job, right? There you go. So let's just go ahead and get that in there. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. That's gonna add a nice concentrated tomato flavor. Right. You it's know a what? Good color. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this beef base. Yes, sir. Beef up the beef flavor. <laughs> yes, sir. Want to mix that in? Allow it to kind of coat the vegetables. And then, last but not least, I'm gonna come with this. Uh, Check it out, this garlic paste. I like to add that in last, you know what I mean? We're gonna put in about a tablespoon, just a little bit more. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say this? You can't never have too much garlic though, man. Not at my house. All right. So now we're going down with a few tablespoons of all-purpose flour. That's gonna thicken things up a bit. That only takes about 60 seconds or so, so just give it a good mix. You wanna work this over low heat. And then we're gonna add in three cups of beef broth. Bring that to a boil, you'll notice it'll start to thicken up. And you wanna constantly be scraping the bottom of that skillet, that way you get up all that fawn and flavor from the beef, from the vegetables. There we go. Hey, look, it's that fawn right there. That's why when you go to the restaurants and sometimes you say, this don't take like, taste like it do at the house. Right. That's because, listen, we done pulled all of the stops and added all of the tricks into that. Absolutely. All right, so now we're gonna season this up going down with some AP seasoning. If you don't have this, guys, use whatever your favorite all-purpose seasoning is, or just a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, whatever you got laying around the house or that you like in your beef stew. We're also gonna go down with a little smoked paprika, because why the hell not? And then we're gonna add our beef to the party and just let that simmer away for about two hours until it gets nice and tender, at which point we'll add our carrots and potatoes and the frozen peas. Hey, look, I was just waiting for you to pause or something. You know, hey, check this out, folks. You know you gotta add that W sauce. Yes, sir. That's gonna add a lot more flavor to the situation as well. Well, that's what we're doing, right? We building. Yes, sir. All right, so now we're gonna add back in the short rib and any accumulated juices from the bowl here. We've already browned it up nicely. Now we're just gonna go low and slow until it gets nice and tender. Oh, man, this is gonna be good. Oh, yeah. And with that flour in there and that heat, that's Can't gonna be a nice herbs, thickening agent too. The kind you cook with. <laughs> I got you. A little fresh you. thyme. If we had bay leaves, <laughs> I'll throw them in there. I'm out of bay leaves, so we'll make the most of it. That's right. All right. Let's put a lid on it, put it to sleep. All right, guys, so we're about 30 minutes away from having the most delicious beef stew you've ever tasted. At this point, the meat is just about reaching the tenderness that we want. It's time to go ahead and add in the potatoes. Stir those in. 30 minutes is all they need to get nice and tender for us. We're also gonna add a little bit more veggies to the party, some celery and some carrots. That way they don't get too mushy if you add them too soon. Right, right, My right. grandma always told me that carrots are good for your eyes, so don't forget those. I'm still wearing glasses though, so I'm not sure how accurate that was. <laughs> we can uh, fish out the thyme sprigs here. Not gonna need those anymore. We already borrowed the flavor from that. About 30 more minutes, we'll be ready to plate this up. So at this point, guys, the meat is super tender. It's about time to add the peas to the party. Maybe I'll let you do the honors. Thank you. 
There we go. If you don't like peas, you should grow up. <laughs> Just like kidding, that. guys. <clears throat> I liked peas when I was a kid. I don't mind them in a stew like this. Has a nice pop of color. Yes, it does. Last but not least, my friends, to thicken this up, depending on how you like your stew, whatever consistency you like, this is more like a soup-like consistency. To thicken it up more like a stew, I add what's called a slurry, which is a combination of cornstarch and cold water. Equal parts. Yes, sir. Add that in there. Give it a stir. Bring that up to a simmer. And it'll thicken up just a little bit. There's not much else I'd rather want on this cold rainy day than a nice bowl of beef stew. Here goes nothing. Cheers. Cheers. Trying to burn my tongue. Mm. I guess it's just right, bro. The texture on the, on the character. Consistency. Yes. There you have it, folks. Beef stew fresh out the cookbook. Make sure you grab yourself a copy. Free shipping right now. The link is in the description box below. Make sure you grab one for the holiday season. I'm going in for one more bite.